All right, we'll take questions for Avalanche forward Miko Rantanen, Ryan O'Halloran, and Denver Post. Hey, Miko, how tough was today's game? You, you figured you were going to get St. Louis's best and you come back from a one nothing deficit. Yeah, it was uh, probably the toughest game for us. Uh, I think we still played pretty well. I think, especially like game two, we're not really happy how we played, but I think the last two games we wrapped up the series really well and found a way to play. Uh, Kind of that grinding hockey. So you know, everybody knows we have the speed and the skill, but in the playoffs, sometimes we have to grind wins too. And I think that's what we did last two games. Peter Baugh, the Athletic. Hey, Miko. Um, I guess how nice is it to get this series done in four games and and now have a little bit of a break going into round two after kind of going and going and going all season long. Yeah, it's it's nice, you know. And uh, like you said, get some rest and get ready for second round. But it's good for Always in a playoff series, if it's even if it's four or seven games, there's always uh you get banged out by every every guy. So so it's nice to get a couple of days off there, hopefully. Adrian Dater, Colorado Hockey Now. Nico, you got like a 15 game point streak or something, uh, you know. Um, but I know you love to score goals. Uh, to get that one off your back today a little bit in the series, do you uh, do you feel a little bit of uh, relief in a way? Yeah, it's always nice to score. I don't think anybody can deny that who plays hockey. That's what everybody loves after winning. You know, that's probably the second best feeling. And uh, so, yeah, it's uh, one of my responsibilities to produce offensively. Uh, that's the only way uh, we're going to win if we want to win. So so uh, it's it's obviously feels good, but I was great. Had a lot of chances before I should have been. Should have got the first goal before this game, but uh, sometimes it's, it is like that, and their goalie played well. Eric Dean, Mile High Sports. Miko, Brandon Saad scored in his third straight game, and he was injured for quite a little bit at the end of the regular season. Uh, did you know that he had this much of a scoring pedigree? Yeah, you know, I think he he scored 30 a couple of times in his uh, career, so everybody knows he can score. and Very solid player. Very, very good skater. I think, you know, we can take the D wide. And, and like we saw today, you know, his shot and he can score in close like we saw the last game. So so he can score any way, basically. So he's a very, very valuable player for us. Let's take two more here for Miko. Mark Kisla, Denver Post. Hey, Miko, uh, talk a little bit, if you would, about uh, Nate setting you up for that goal. And, and is being Nate's wingman the best job in hockey? <laughs> Probably. I don't know. It's uh, <laughs> one of it for sure. I agree. Last one here, Mike Morial, NHL.com. Yeah, Miko, um, collectively, is there a different feeling or vibe in the locker room amongst the players, you know, this playoff as compared to previous playoffs? Uh, maybe. Always you get fired up for the playoffs. And I think we had the, we knew we were able to win last year too, but we didn't get it done. So, uh, we have a lot of the same guys from last year that came back this year and uh, basically the same team with a couple additions. So so uh, everybody knows what we have to do. And, uh, and yeah, it's a, it's a good feeling in the room, basically. All right. Thank you, Miko. All right, we'll take questions for Avalanche captain Gabriel Landeskog, Ryan O'Halloran, Denver Post. Hey, Gabe, sweeps are tough to come by in this league in the playoffs. How proud of you of the, of the group to finish it off uh, with your first chance today? Yeah, definitely proud, and, and it's not easy to do. I mean, St. Louis, believe me, they're, they're a really good team, and I think you look at the whole series and, and you break down each game, I think the, the score hasn't really been indicative of, of the way series has been. It's been really tight, it's been, been hard checking and it hasn't been easy. So come in here in a tough building to play in and, and, uh, and take two in a row um, against a desperate team. It's not easy to do. So um, yeah, happy, happy that we got it done and, and without giving them any sort of momentum or, or hope. Peter Baugh, The Athletic. Yeah, Gabe, I know you played with Ryan O'Reilly for a good part of the beginning of your career. Did what did he kind of say to you in the handshake liner, if, if you're able to share that? 
not a whole lot. Good series and good luck. I think that's for the most part what guys are saying. And and uh, um, yeah, like you said, obviously Factor and I came in together, and or I came in and and uh, he played a couple of years in the league, and and uh, I was able to watch him up close and and play with him as a as my centerman and and learn a lot from him. Listen, he's he's a top player in this league that he's shown for years and, and is a real competitive guy. And, and, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it was a hard fought series, no doubt. Adrian Dater, Colorado hockey now. I know there's a ton of respect for Ryan O'Reilly, uh, tons, you know, a great player, great guy. Uh, but be honest, Gabe, uh, did his quote before the series that they were going to beat you at all motivate you guys at all, or did you not care? Um, uh, yeah, I did. Mark Kisland, Denver Post. Mark, you have to unmute yourself. All right, we'll try coming back to him. I got it, I got it, I got it. Oh, you got it? Dave, you got me? Um, two things. Uh, you know as well as anybody that, that, that injuries played a big factor in, in you guys not winning the cup last year. Um, how good does a sweep feel to, to just, you know, uh, mitigate the chance of, of another game of two or three that, that can lead to injuries? And second, um, where does being uh, Nathan McKinnon, Nathan McKinnon's wingman rank in best jobs in hockey? Uh, yeah, I mean, listen, first part of the question, it's uh... – Absolutely. Anytime you can, like I said earlier on, anytime you have a chance to, to finish off a team, uh, you want to take that chance because momentum's a funny thing and uh, you don't want to give them any type of hope or, or life. And, 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 you know, going back to Denver, uh, you know, for game five, we just wanted to take our chance and, and take our opportunity here tonight to end this thing. And I'm very proud of the way we work tonight. Um, and yeah, being Nate's wingman as you, you put it, uh, it's definitely one of the, the best jobs in hockey. I, I'd have to agree with you. I think, uh, you know, obviously both him and Miko are, have very high, high skill and, and uh, top talents in the league. But not only that, they work really hard. And, and we talk about plays all the time. We're, we're trying to constantly work on our game and study each other and, and, and learn from each other. So um, it's, it's definitely fun playing with those two guys. We'll take two more here for Gabe. Michael Morial, NHL.com. Hey, Gabe. Um, so collectively, is there a different feeling or vibe with the team this playoff as compared to, to last year's playoff? I mean, is the confidence level, do you feel as though, do you sense it's kind of, you know, maybe a tick or two up from previous years? Yeah, I think so. I mean, listen, every, every chance, every, every season that goes on and, and, Every playoff series that you get uh, eliminated, you, you know, your hunger and your want just goes up that much higher. And, and I think that's the difference between our group. Uh, you know, we're, we're just that much more hungry for it this year and, and, and that much more, um, you know, competitive, I'd like to say. I think obviously we we're competitive last year as well, but um, you realize that you only have so many chances and, uh, you know, you're just trying to, obviously live in the moment, not get ahead of yourself, but you want to make sure that you're, you're doing everything you can to, um, to take care of those opportunities. And we have a really good team and want to make the most of it. Last one here, Ryan O'Halloran, Denver Post. Hey Gabe, uh, Jared Bednar said the first couple of games, some inconsistencies um, was tonight. Did tonight feel like more complete game for your lineup? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I mean, we were able to keep the, a desperate team on the other side uh, to only 20 shots. I think that's, uh, that's pretty good. And, and uh, uh, obviously they, they're a desperate team, like I said, and, and they're going to come out and play hard and, and they did. Uh, but I feel like we were able, you know, keep them to the outside for the most part. And, and, and when they did um, come to the inside and when they did create scoring chances, Groovy was there and made some huge stops for us. And, and, um, and, and that's what we needed. And I think tonight was, yeah, definitely a strong team effort all the way through. All right. Thank you, Gabe. Thank you.
All right, we'll take questions for Avalanche goaltender Philip Grubauer. Peter Baugh, The Athletic. Yeah, Philip, I guess what, what does it mean to this team to get, get through this round, especially so quickly, and give yourself a little bit of rest going into, into round two? Yeah, I think it's huge to get a couple of days. Um, but most important, how we played. Um, every game, 60 minutes, every shift, every, every small detail matters in the playoffs. And I think we found a way to, to uh, do that in every game. And that's going to be the key moving forward, too. Eric Dean, Mile High Sports. Philip, is there a lot of confidence going into the second round knowing that you guys just played a really good team and beat them in four games and only allowed seven goals? Yeah, I mean, like, um, like it just said, uh, same thing. Um, we found a way to play 60 minutes. Um, like Gabe said, it's, uh, I don't think they had that many opportunities. We played our way. They only got like shots from the outside and um, did a great job overall in the series to eliminate chances and keeping them to the outside. Ryan O'Halloran, Denver Post. How cool is it to get an assist in a playoff game? Uh, honestly, I don't really, I don't really care too much. Um, I'm worried about stopping the puck, but um, great to see Kale pick it up and Sauter score. A really important, uh, important uh, moment of the game. Michael Morial, NHL.com. Hey Phil, uh, everyone knows how special this team is offensively, but what makes this team equally impressive from a defensive standpoint? Yeah, I think uh, um, we have a lot of guys back there who can skate and there's enough skill back there to break the puck out, to to defend the right way once they come at us uh, on the rush or or even on the power play. Um, we, we're finding a way to defend the right way, not just our defensemen, our forward as well. So it's, it's five guys on the ice who need to defend the right way. Last one here, Scott McDonald, Colorado Hockey Now. Hey, Philip. Um, you know, Jordan Bennington seemed to like try to get in your head a little bit um, throughout the playoff series. I'm curious, you know, if you if you could share, you know, what he maybe said in the uh, in the handshake line there, or was it just a good luck thing? Um, I think it was just a good luck thing. I can't remember, but um, yeah, um, things things happen in the series. Uh, get a little pushy if he wants to come down. Uh, one day somebody's going to answer the bell. So hopefully um, he doesn't do that too many times. But it's 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 his game, and if he wants to do that, so so be it. I said it before, and not worried about too much. Like, all right, thank you, Philip. Yeah. All right, we'll take questions for Avalanche head coach Jared Bednar. Ryan O'Halloran, Denver Post. Hey, Jared, sweeps don't happen in the playoffs a lot. Um, how impressed were you with your guys' effort today to you know, beat a desperate team? I thought it was our best game of the series. I liked, I liked our game a lot tonight. I think uh, the, the, the details of our, of our checking and our structure were outstanding. Um, tough to work through all five of our guys tonight just just put a real importance on on playing the right way and checking the right way and getting back above pucks and made it difficult I mean they got one of their goals in the on the power play where we get the inadvertent high stick from Jost um, held them to you know I don't know how many exactly but kept their scoring chances against down tonight. And, and that's what we were, and it was a full 60 minute effort. So I, I, I think the first three games, we had some lapses in our game and um, some things that I didn't like, but tonight I liked a lot of it. Maybe not as dangerous as what we can be on the offensive side of things, but we found a way to score enough goals to win the hockey game. Lauren Jabara, Altitude Sports. Hey, Jared, being able to get this done in four, like how much emphasis did you place on, hey, we really want to get it done tonight because of how intense the season was, how intense postseason is to have a few days well, to rest a lot the body of, before. Yeah, there's a lot of advantages to getting done early. I think, you know, rest and recovery for our guys. You can get some practice time in. It gives you extra time to prepare. Uh, you never, like St. Louis is a very good hockey team. You got to tip your cap. I mean, they... 
they ran into a little bit about of what we ran into last year in the bubble is you know they lose Perron before the series they uh, lose Falk during the series and, and key players that are eliminated from their lineup due to injury and COVID and and uh, so they were grinding and working and and playing the right way and. Um, they just ran into some bad luck and I, I thought our team played real well and, and, and took advantage of a little bit of that. So, but to be able to, you know, get the rest that we need and have that extra time to prepare uh, Vegas and, and Nini are at three, one right now. So we don't know how long that's going to take. And, and I think it's a, it's a positive for our group. You know, we, we can get, hopefully get rested and get healthy here before we, we start the next round. Peter Baugh, the athletic. Yeah, Jared, how pleased were you, I guess, with your team's presence in front of the net after kind of you stressed that game one? It seems like you guys were pretty, I guess, compact around the net and had a lot of tips the, the last few games. On the offensive side of things? Yeah, yeah, yeah offensively. Right. Well, yeah, I, I think there was we had – we did a good job of getting pucks through from from the outside of the offensive zone. Our numbers were looking good, um, but not enough screenshots. Uh, we had we had some rebound chances in the first three games, but I mean, if you look at the goals tonight, you know, Landy's especially, we get a deep delay in the in the offensive zone. It comes up to uh, Gerard and, and he lets it go right away. But Landy's over in the corner and he just fights to the interior of the ice and he gets a deflection on it. I mean, that's a difference. If he doesn't get there, it's a um, can of corn for Bennington and, and uh, we're facing it off. So those little plays and and getting back to the interior of the ice for screens, tips, and rebounds, I think are real important. And, uh, you know, like there's a lot of teams that are very good at that. And, and we've got better at that over the years, but it's, it's how you score goals this time of year. You got to get around the paint. You got to put pucks there. Adrian Dater, Colorado Hockey Now. Coach, uh, I want to agree with my statement. I thought the turning point in the game, though, was the, uh, the sod power play goal. They're, two seconds away from killing a penalty. They're going to get a big cheer from their crowd. They're up one, nothing. And it just seemed like uh, that goal deflated everything uh, real quick too. If you have a new hook update too, at the end of that, if you don't mind. Yeah. So well, new hook, I mean, you got, I'm sure you guys saw the, the hit that we were on a rush attack. He was charging that and he got hit on a puck that was put in there and went into the end boards or corner bo boards pretty heavily. And, and, um, hit his his uh, back in there so he stiffened up and and tried it for a couple shifts and you know as he was sitting and, and going in between shifts it just kind of got a little bit worse so he left the game I don't have any other uh, medical information than that um, and then you that that certainly was a big goal though when you when you every goal is a big goal in the playoffs but I mean just the timing of that goal to kind of get us started in the second period and we had some good looks in the first period. I thought Bennington was good again. Our goalie was playing well. I, I just think that you, you, you take some of those opportunities, time's running out. They know they only have the rush attack and Kale executes a great play. Sauter moves into the right area and he just gets it on and off his tape. And, and I mean, I think that's, I think Sauter's now scored in three games in a row. I mean, a guy that missed time, you know, at the end of the season and, and jumps in and, and starts producing it at the most important time of the year. And he has a reputation for that. So we need that to continue. Kate Shefty, the Gazette. There were a lot of potential distractions in the series between the suspension kind of hanging around and the after the whistle stuff. Do you like how the team main, maintained focus? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I thought, again, I thought that was our best game of the series and, you don't want to give a, a good team a chance, you know. They, we we did a nice job maneuvering through some some, you know, not so great play from our team in the second periods, and and being able to sort of break their momentum in the thirds and, and play well, and then, um, you know, you, you just don't. They they had a good start to tonight's game. They were playing hard and. Uh, we were trading some chances. I thought our team was checking on. Well, you just don't want to give a team life. If they're able to win the night, then, you know, they're thinking, we'll just steal one in Denver and we're coming home again. So when you have a chance to eliminate teams, you, you have to 
you have to be able to capitalize and, and, and get the job done. And uh, our guys did that, you know, and that, and that's focus, it's determination, it's, it's uh, consistency. And, you know, I thought we got a little better as the series went on. Take three more here for Jared. Evan Rall, DNVR. Hey, Coach. Uh, obviously, offensively, everyone knows how good Makar is with his skating. Everyone can see that. But you know how good he is defensively. Do you think the whole world is kind of going to see just how good he is defensively, even at such a young age during this playoff run? Yeah, I believe so. I think I thought he had a great night tonight on that side of the pocket. I mean, there there is some... Um, I mean, we expect a lot from him on the offensive side of things, and, and that's what he, his strength, uh, overall strength of his game is. But he's a strong skater, obviously. He's a, he can play physical. He's got a great stick. And um, when you can defend plays with the tight gap coming into your zone and then use your legs to get you in and out or close plays down, I thought he was aggressive. He was quick to contact tonight. And um, for me, defensively, his best game of the series. Arif Dean, Mile High Sports. Jared, there's a lot that's been said, understandably so, about the team's offense, but defensively, or I should say goaltending, uh, do you feel like Philip Grubauer's performance has kind of been overshadowed by the fact that you guys have scored so many goals? No, not not by the people in our room. You know, I think, um, he, I, I think we've done a nice job making sure other teams don't get a ton of scoring chances. Our commitment to defend has been good all season. Um, when we need a save, whether it's, you know, a breakdown or a turnover, he's there to make those saves for us. And, and everyone in our room um, and with our organization values Groovy and, and, and what he's done for us. You know, I think it gets overshadowed because we're not letting teams put up 40 shots a night or high 30s, you know, like we've been trying to keep those shots down. and. Um, but it doesn't it doesn't diminish what he brings to our team when you need to save he's been there to give it to us and and that's his job and he's been outstanding at it so far this whole season last one here for Jared, one here for Jared Michael Morial NHL.com hey Jared I realize you entered the playoffs as the president's trophy winner but was there anything you learned about your group in this series that maybe you weren't so sure about from the outset um, I, I don't think so. No, um, not so far. I mean, I, I think that uh, our t the thing we've been preaching is, is that commitment to defense and playing a 200 foot game. And, and I think you look at the series, I, I, I think we had opportunities to get a little bit more dangerous offensively. We scored on, on, on some of our chances. I think we shot the puck well. I know, I know we have the ability to do that. Uh, our, our time in the offensive zone went down from game one to game two to game three. I haven't seen tonight's yet, but we still were able to be productive and get to the interior of the ice. So, um, you know, it's not necessarily about the time you spend there. You have to be productive. And, and, and we've had games in the past where we were we spent a lot of time in the offensive zone and weren't as productive. So there's a balance there. But I like the way our team defended, and I knew that we could do that. And, um, I mean, it's just going to get tougher and tougher as, as we move on here in the playoffs. And um, hopefully we can sustain it. It always looks good until you run into a team that, that doesn't allow you to do um, the things that you're trying to do in a game. And, and then you have to adjust, and you got to be able to work through it. And so, you know, our tests will come here as, as we try to move on in the playoffs here. All right. Thank you, Jared. Thank you.